Hey everyone, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. I want to put a little video series together where we'll take a look at little snippets of song ideas and you can take away these song ideas and develop into your own songs or your own parts. And um, it also gives some good insight into how to write such like mathy and emo tinged ideas. And I plan on doing one uh, idea per video and uh, each video will look at a various different you know, idea you know, coming from different influences and different songwriting perspectives. Uh, so let me know what you think if you want to see more of this series after watching the video. So for this video I have an idea that you probably typically hear in a, like a Midwest emo kind of song. So we'll take a listen to the idea and then afterwards we'll look at what the influences were and how I went about writing the idea and hopefully this will give you some insight into how, how I create certain ideas and also hopefully something that you can take away and start to apply to your own songwriting skills. <laughs> So that was the idea. Um, as I said, it kind of has that, <clears throat> that Midwest emo tinge to it kind of thing. And the main influence for this song was the song uh, Better Half by the Get Up Kids uh, from the album 4 Minute Mile, which is something my friend introduced me a long time ago, but instantly fell in love with that, that emo kind of music back then. So, uh, you know, this song. <laughs> I think that's exactly how you play it, but that's uh, how I like to play it. But lovely little li little song there, and um, so I took these root notes. And I based my idea around that basically. Uh, so this gave us the key of G major, and I will say I'll try and keep the uh, theory on the on the light side here and talk more about just the chords and how I constructed the stuff. So the, for the first bar, I played a C major. Note. Which is definitely a, a staple of a I mean, like Midwest emo sound or that you know math rock emo tinged kind of music. Uh, um, you know, major nine chords always sound great. Like, and I had that little run, that little run there to connect to the the next chord. So this one is a, a D sus four sus two. And the reason for this was because in G major you have G, A, B, C, D and uh, you music theory buffs out there will know that the uh, D um, when you extend it becomes a dominant chord. They didn't really particularly want the a dominant sound, you know, uh, in this because it doesn't really sound like that, really that emo tinge kind of sound, right? So I decided to change it to like a sus2 or a sus4, which is a great thing you can do if you want to um, change a chord sound. And, and that definitely, you know, already you can hear that has that kind of like emo sound to it, that emo tinged uh, sound to it, right? And that's what um, a lot of sus, sus chords would give you. It's kind of in between that major and minor sound, which you hear a lot of uh, in this style of music. For the third bar, um, the chord there is a E minus seven. Again, another um, very good chord to use if you want to make some kind of Midwest emo sound. So I kept the same rhythm here as the previous two bars, but I wanted to change things up a little bit. So instead of strumming on every single note, I added that um, you know hammer on and pull off there. And for the last bar, uh, we come to the G, right? So the G, G major. So this one I messed around with quite a few chords. You know, I had a G major seven. I was just trying to find a chord that you know really gelled well with the uh, the other chords in the progression. But I eventually came to the uh, G sus two. The reason for this was was just the the higher notes sounded better coming from the E minor. So 
was the reason for that one, so just a uh, personal taste there. And then I changed the uh, rhythm for this one, just to signify that, you know, the change is coming back round where we're going back to the, the C. Uh, that's a cool little thing you can do, um, if you haven't thought about that before, is how your riffs, um, you know, they go back into each other. Uh, you can signify you know, to your listener quite easily by just changing your rhythm or, you know, have that little run also. <laughs> That last note in the row ends on a D here on the fifth fret on the A string, and the reason for that was because it connects nicely back to the C there when we come down to the repeat. So that's another thing you can signify that a change is coming as well. So you have the rhythm change, and then the notes connect nicely coming back into the first chord. That's if you do want to be like harmonically you know, sounding quite nice. Um, you can do whatever you like, right? This is math rock, but uh, me myself, I'm a big fan of uh, having melody more than just wackiness. So yeah, that's my reason for that one. So we'll leave it there for this time. Um, I hope you can see how I took the chords and the ideas and how I glued them all together and how I thought about how the, the idea would come back round and then recycle and start again. They all sound very nice together. So um, please leave any questions in the comments. Um, I always like to have a little discussion with you guys and um, let me know what ideas you would like to see next as well, that would be great. I'm thinking of doing um, maybe some kind of Fall of Troy kind of idea next and uh, um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of stuff we can go on, on about, right? So uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you there. Well, thank you for watching. Oh, and also before I go, the uh, tab is over on my website as well, which I'll put in the description. Thank you for watching, you lovely people. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.